Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chambo Wan, a PhD student at University College London, supervised by Dr. Gemma Kremen and Dr. Carmen Blasso. I would like to thank EFIT for this opportunity to be here today and thank everyone for being here. Uh, in this presentation, I'll focus on research work at UCL to leverage data-driven approaches to assess effects of different policies on uh, post-earthquake household relocation decision-making. Increasingly devastating earthquakes score for innovative risk-sensitive uh, planning tools. When an earthquake strikes, it can cause extensive damage to people's home workplaces, as well as the infrastructure networks that they depend on. As the world grows, more and more urban areas and uh, uh, people become exposed and vulnerable to devastating earthquakes, which will cause them to relocate unless disaster policies are designed with the help of risk sensitive planning tools to help them mitigate their relocation. As part of the required effort, we advance a risk sensitive framework we developed for soft policy design to explicitly account for post earthquake household relocation decision making. Policymakers first design policies as input to the policy bundle and apply the policies to an urban plan associated with a specific time instance in the urban planning module. The policy bundle and urban planning module collectively produces a fishing scenario. A fishing scenario represents the urban system at a snapshot in time while this could be the current version of our urban systems, it is intended for the framework to be used in a forward-looking manner. The information in the fissioning scenario informs the calculations going on in the computational model. The seismic hazard module estimates the ground motion intensities at the location of the exposed assets as specified in the urban planning module and the physical infrastructure impact module takes the ground motion fills and uses it in combination with fragility relationships to estimate the physical damage associated with the assets. The social impact module then uses the physical damage information and then uh, leverages the data-driven model to estimate whether a household decide to relocate or to stay. The data-driven model is informed by local perspectives, which provide important context-specific information on what factors goes into the decision-making process underpinning the household's relocation after an earthquake disaster. Uh, then the estimation of household relocation decision are translated into a poverty buyer's indicator, which measures the extent to which the low-income population collectively decide in favor of relocation. The lower this PBI poverty buyers indicator value is, the more pro poor the associated fissioning scenario is. In this study, we're interested in the 2015 Guoka earthquake and uh, the uh, disaster-induced household relocation which uh, the Guoka earthquake is a devastating 7.8 moment magnitude earthquake event. It uh, killed over 9,000 people and injured almost 22,000. Uh, due to extensive damage to the buildings on a large scale, people in disaster hit areas, they had to stay in temporary housing or even tents for an extended period uh, beyond the emergency response period, and in some cases, this period can last up to years. Some households relocate to areas after, uh, to other areas after struggling to secure uh, housing and livelihoods, in addition to dealing with a set of other disaster impacts, for example, poor sanitation, uh, loss of access to education, transportation, and healthcare services. To capture the household relocation decision-making of the Napoli household following the 2015 Gorka earthquake, we develop a data-driven model, which, which also lies at the center of the enhanced framework. 
record that the local uh, the data driven model is informed by the local perspectives which provide relevant context specific information on household relocation decision making. And in this study, we use the recovery data collected by the Asia Foundation uh, after the 2015 Gorka earthquake near Kathmandu Valley as our local perspectives. The data we used uh, to develop the data-driven model is the fourth round of the five-year longitudinal study, which is designed to monitor the long-term disaster impacts, recovery patterns, as well as households' evolving needs over a five-year duration. Uh, essentially, the IRM team visited the same set of households and asked them similar questions at different timestamps over the five-year duration to understand the long-term disaster effects. Uh, these, these questions include, for example, whether the household uh, decides to relocate, whether the earthquake had an impact on their livelihood, what is the government assessed damage level associated with their residences, and uh, were they eligible for the government's reconstruction grant from the National Reconstruction Authority, and if so, how much money had they received at the point of the survey, and uh, also, how satisfied were they about their uh, housing and neighborhood conditions, which includes, for example, the provision of drinking water, electricity, uh, road networks, uh, as well as the schools and hospitals surfaces. The run for data that we use to construct the model includes uh, 3,519 responses from disaster affected households. We use this data to construct a random forest model and validate the model using tenfold cross-validation. And the area under the receiver operator characteristic curve is 0.71, which we consider satisfactory in our case. In the model we construct, household relocation decision is a function of age of the household head, uh, livelihood impact on the household level, as well as the residential damage associated with their uh, residential buildings. The inclusion of these factors is consistent with our literature refill of existing studies that analyze the recovery patterns following the 2015 Guokar earthquake. And it is also confirmed by our visit to Kathmandu in November 2022. During our visit to disaster affected areas such as uh, Kathmandu and Bhaktapu, we were able to see the strong ancestral uh, attachment that people have to their ancestral homes. Uh, and in our model, age of the household head is a fairly good proxy for uh, people's attachment to their ancestral home. The older the household head is, the more uh, attachment people have towards their ancestor home and the less likely they're going to relocate after a devastating earthquake event. On this trip, we're also able to see the importance of uh, livelihoods and residential damage. Now that we have the model to predict household relocation decision-making, we can then test the effects of different policies on discouraging or encouraging households to stay after an earthquake. To achieve this, we demonstrate the framework and the underlying data-driven model for an earthquake five kilometers southwest of Tomorrowville. Tomorrowville is a virtual urban extent which imitates a global south setting by means of its social and physical characteristics. Uh, we would like to know that Tomorrowville was developed heavily based on the important social and physical features of Kathmandu, which is the exact spot that the Guokar earthquake hit back in 2015. In the absence of detailed information on Kathmandu's exposure and vulnerability, uh, Tomorrowville, which is a fairly um, broad representation of the global south and in particular Kathmandu, is our next best possible option for urban test beds. Uh, to emphasize our focus on the uncertain future urban development and the inherent forward-looking philosophy of our methods, we adopt a possible 50-year future projection of Tomorrowville. And in this future Tomorrowville, there are about 
8,713 residential buildings, in addition to 1,443 non-residential buildings. Tomorrowville is expected to be home to about 6,800 low-income households, uh, 3,100 middle-income households, and about 800 high-income households. So the urban planning module uh, includes detailed information on Tomorrowville's land use building portfolio, as well as household and individual data set. The household level characteristics include, for example, age of the household head, gender of the household head, and the size of the household, uh, which means how many people there are in the household. The individual data set uh, includes information on each individual for example, what's their occupation, uh, where they go to work roughly, uh, their age, gender, et cetera. And all of this information is spatially related within GIS databases. Now let's dive into the computational model. The seismic hazard module uh, estimates the ground motion intensities at the location of Tomorrowville buildings. And the physical infrastructure impact module takes these ground motion intensity values and uses re fertility relationships to estimate the physical damage at the location of Tomorrowville buildings. Uh, note that each household can be affected by the physical damage to a different extent due to the differences that they experience in terms of the damage to their home, workplaces, as well as the community assets. Here in Tomorrowville, community assets include schools and hospitals. Then finally, in the social impact module, the physical damage information and the data-driven model are leveraged to estimate whether a household decide to relocate or to stay after a 7.0 moment magnitude earthquake near Tomorrowville. We assess the effects of four different policies related to Tomorrowville's uh, buildings and household on uh, mitigating post-earthquake household relocation. Policy number one is a soft policy that is also compensatory. It provides livelihood assistance to households in which at least one member is made unemployed by the disaster. Policies two to four are hard and corrective policy, which focuses on strengthening the physical facilities of tomorrow felt buildings. Uh, for example, policy number two replaces non-reinforced concrete workplace buildings with high code reinforced concrete buildings. Policy number three replaces non-reinforced concrete residential buildings with high code reinforced concrete buildings. Whereas policy number four is a slightly uh, different version of policy number three that focuses only on the low income sector of the residential buildings. Uh, here are the results for uh, each policy in terms of the reduction in the number of households who relocate after implement, implementing each policy. We can see here policy number one, a soft policy, outperforms the other uh, hard policies that focus on uh, strengthening the physical facilities of Tomorrowville. This highlights that solving the problem of post-earthquake household relocation relies on more than simply strengthening buildings. We can also see from this plot that uh, workplace building upgrades represented by policy number two can be as effective as residential building upgrades represented by policy number three and number four. This tells us that there is more that can be done to mitigate post-earthquake household relocation than simply making sure they have a good post-earthquake housing condition. In our case, securing livelihoods turns out to be also very important. Uh, to understand the disaster impact on the low-income population relative to the other, we also compute the so-called poverty buyers indicator, PBI. The lower PBI is, the relatively more pro-poor the associated policy is. We can see here policy number one is even slightly more pro poor than policy number four, which was explicitly designed to facilitate pro poor outcomes by restricting remits based on income thresholds. 
This highlights that income-blind soft policies can provide new opportunities for designing disaster risk reduction policies without the need for uh, sensitive uh, income thresholds. So moving forward uh, with this risk sensitive enhanced framework and our data-driven approaches, we are more recently, we held several disaster impact metrics workshops in Kathmandu, Nepal, uh, with our local partners, NSAT, National Society of Earthquake Technologies. Using questionnaires de developed based on uh, extensive literature refill and community inputs, we aim to gain a better understanding of how various factors beyond physical damage can affect households' relocation decision-making. We're also currently in the process of applying the framework to support policy-related decision-making efforts with our local partners, uh, NSAT, and other uh, partners in Rapti and Kathmandu, Nepal. And uh, we're also in the process of expanding our forward-looking risk-sensitive framework to explicitly account for other earthquake impacts, for example, uh, that mentioned, was mentioned previously, the loss of access to healthcare and education services. So to conclude, we propose a forward-looking approach for assessing the effects of different disaster risk reduction policies in mitigating positive post-earthquake household relocation decision-making. Our approach integrates uh, social and physical considerations, as well as important local perspectives, which help to better quantify the disaster impact of interest. We show through the case study that the income blind soft policies can provide new opportunities for designing uh, pro poor policies without the need for uh, income threshold, and it can lower the disproportionate number of households, low income households who relocate. We would also like to emphasize that this is only the beginning of a series of ongoing policy related decision support efforts. We are looking, uh, we're working with local partners to uh, make sure that our framework can have a real policy impact. And we're also um, highlighting that the framework presented here today serves as the basis for uh, better characterizing a broad range of disaster impacts through the integration of local perspectives into physical and social considerations. Uh, thank you so much for your attention and for the opportunity to be here today. Thanks a lot.